Linux isn't just one operating system. It has hundreds of distributions, or distros, from beginner-friendly to hacker tools to enterprise servers. Let's dive in. Ubuntu. If Linux had a celebrity, it would be Ubuntu, the distro everyone's heard of. For most people, it's the easiest way into Linux because it just works. The moment you install it, drivers are ready, apps like Firefox and LibreOffice are pre-installed, and the desktop is simple enough that even first-timers can get going in minutes. Under the hood, Ubuntu is based on Debian, but with more polish, stronger driver support, and one of the largest communities in Linux. You can run it on desktops, laptops, and servers, and even lightweight IoT devices through its core edition. Linux Mint Mint exists because some users felt Ubuntu was moving too fast with changes like the Snap Store. So, Mint took Ubuntu's base and built a calmer, more traditional desktop. Its cinnamon desktop feels instantly familiar if you've used Windows, with a start menu, taskbar, and simple navigation. It comes with multimedia codecs, a software manager that looks like an app store, and it runs very well on older PCs, too. It's focused almost entirely on desktops and laptops, making it a favorite daily driver. Zorin OS If you're switching from Windows or Mac OS, Zorin OS tries to make you feel at home. It has a clean interface, and in its premium edition, you can even make it look like Mac OS or Windows. It's based on Ubuntu, so you get the same stability and app availability, but with a design that smooths out the learning curve. Elementary OS Elementary takes a different route. Instead of copying Windows or Mac OS, it built its own desktop environment called Pantheon. It's minimalist, sleek, and distraction-free, kind of like a Linux version of Mac OS. It comes with its own set of apps like a mail client, music player, and photo viewer. Perfect for people who just want a clean, simple setup. Debian. Debian is one of the oldest Linux distros, first released in the early 90s. It's entirely community-driven, which means no corporation controls it. Debian's big strength is stability. Its release cycle is slow and deliberate, which makes it ideal for servers. But you can also run Debian as a desktop with choices like GNOME, KDE, or XFCE. Many other distros, including Ubuntu, Kali Linux, and Mint, are all built on Debian. And what that really means is they use Debian as the foundation, the same package system, the same base structure, but with their own tools, themes, and purposes layered on top. So you could say Debian is the parent of a huge part of the Linux world. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, often called RHEL, is a commercial Linux distribution built for businesses that need reliability and professional support. Companies pay Red Hat for certification, updates, and long-term maintenance which is why you'll find RHEL running in banks, data centers, government agencies, and Fortune 500 companies. It comes with strong security features like SE Linux and offers up to 10 years of support for each major release. Unlike Ubuntu or Mint, this isn't something you casually install on a home laptop. It's designed as the gold standard for enterprise servers and mission-critical systems. CentOS Stream, Rocky, and Alma Linux. These are the go-to choices for people who want Red Hat-like systems without paying for licenses. CentOS Stream acts as a rolling preview of what's coming in future Red Hat Enterprise releases, so developers often use it to test software against upcoming changes. But after classic CentOS was discontinued, two replacements stepped up, Rocky Linux and Alma Linux. Both are free, community-driven, and fully compatible with RHEL. That means anything certified to run on Red Hat will also run smoothly here. Because of that, you'll often see these distros powering web hosting services, cloud servers, and enterprise setups where cost savings matter. But stability is still critical. Fedora. If you want the latest features, check out Fedora. It's sponsored by Red Hat, and it basically acts as a testing ground for new ideas before they go into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. That means Fedora gets cutting-edge software, new kernels, and innovations first, which is great if you want the newest tools, but it also means shorter support cycles, since a new Fedora version comes out about every six months. 
Despite being fast moving, it still has strong security features like SE Linux built in, making it reliable for developers and enthusiasts. Many people use Fedora as their daily desktop, and fun fact, Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, has been known to run Fedora himself. Arch Linux. Arch is for the tinkerers. Unlike Ubuntu or Mint, Arch gives you almost nothing by default, just a base system. You install and configure everything yourself, desktop, apps, drivers. That's why Arch is famous for its keep it simple philosophy. It follows a rolling release model, so you always have the newest packages. And thanks to the Arch user repository, the AUR, you can install just about anything the community has packaged. Arch isn't beginner friendly, but it teaches you a lot about Linux internals. Manjaro. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, but unlike Arch, it's designed to be beginner friendly. Arch gives you nothing by default, and you have to build everything yourself. Manjaro smooths that out with an installer, automatic driver detection, and pre-configured desktops. That's why it's one of the most popular Arch-based distros. You'll often see Manjaro recommended for gamers, creators, and Linux enthusiasts who want Arch power without the Arch pain. Endeavor OS. Endeavor OS is also Arch-based, but it takes a slightly different approach. It doesn't hide the Arch philosophy. You still use the Arch repositories and tools like Pac-Man, but it gives you an easier way to install and start. Think of it as a bridge between raw Arch and user-friendliness. It's popular with people who want to learn Arch commands and tinker, but don't want to go through the manual setup process. OpenSUSE OpenSUSE comes in two versions, Leap, which is stable and great for servers and workstations, and Tumbleweed, a rolling release that always gives you the latest software. What makes OpenSUSE stand out is its powerful admin tool called YAST, which lets you manage everything from users to software updates in one place. It's popular with developers, sysadmins, and especially in Europe, where SUSE has strong roots. Kali Linux. When it comes to hacking and security tools, nothing is more famous than Kali Linux. It's based on Debian, but instead of office apps or games, it comes preloaded with hundreds of penetration testing and cybersecurity tools. For example, Metasploit is used to simulate attacks and test vulnerabilities. Wireshark analyzes network traffic, and Aircrack NG can test the security of Wi-Fi networks. That's why cybersecurity professionals, ethical hackers, and forensic investigators use Kali daily for penetration testing, digital forensics, and network auditing. You can even run Kali on a Raspberry Pi or Android device for portable testing, but it's not recommended as your everyday desktop. It's a specialized toolkit, not a general use system. If you're enjoying this, subscribe so you don't miss the next one and give me the energy to make more. Parrot OS. If Kali is the hacker's toolbox, Parrot OS is the versatile cousin. It also comes with penetration testing and forensic tools, but it adds more options for privacy and daily use. There's a security edition for hacking, a home edition for regular desktop users who care about privacy, and even a cloud edition for server-based testing. It includes a built-in VPN, anonymization tools, and features like MAC address spoofing. That makes Parrot a favorite for cybersecurity professionals who want a system that can handle both testing and day-to-day -day work. Tails. If privacy is your top concern, nothing beats Tails, the amnesic incognito live system. It runs entirely from a USB stick, routes all traffic through Tor, and wipes everything when you shut down. That's why activists, journalists, and whistleblowers often rely on it for maximum anonymity. So far, we've looked at the major Linux distros, the ones that dominate desktops, servers, and enterprise systems. Now, let's take a quick tour through some special purpose and lightweight ones that serve very different needs. Puppy Linux. Puppy Linux is tiny, less than 300 megabytes, and can run entirely in RAM. That means even a 20-year-old computer can feel fast again. It's often used to revive old PCs or as a portable OS you can boot from a USB stick. 
Anti-X. Anti-X is another lightweight distro based on Debian designed for really old hardware. Unlike Puppy, it's a full operating system with different desktop environments, but still light enough to run on machines from the early 2000s. Raspberry Pi OS. Raspberry Pi OS is the official system for Raspberry Pi boards. It's designed for small, low-power computers and comes with tools for coding in Python, controlling sensors and hardware, and learning computer basics. That makes it perfect for students, hobbyists, and anyone who wants to build their own small tech projects at home. Alpine Linux. Alpine Linux is all about minimalism and security. That's why it's so widely used in Docker containers and cloud environments. The base image is just a few megabytes, making it one of the leanest Linux systems out there. In fact, many official Docker images, like PHP, Nginx, or MySQL, offer Alpine-based versions because they're faster to download and lighter to run. Gentoo and Slackware. For Linux veterans, there's Gentoo and Slackware. Gentoo lets you compile everything from source code for maximum customization. Powerful, but time-consuming. Slackware, one of the oldest distros still alive, sticks to the Unix philosophy of simplicity and stability. Both are for people who want full control, not convenience. NixOS. Finally, there's NixOS, which does something no other distro does. Instead of traditional package management, it uses a declarative configuration file. That means you can roll back your entire system if something breaks. Companies like Shopify and Bloomberg actually use it in production because of that reliability. Pop OS. Moving back to more modern systems, Pop OS is developed by System76 and is especially popular among developers, engineers, and gamers. It's based on Ubuntu, but optimized for NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, which makes it great for both AI work and gaming. It also has a tiling window manager for better multitasking and comes preloaded with tools for coding, data science, and creative work. Steam OS built by Valve and powering the Steam Deck handheld console. It's based on Arch Linux and designed specifically for gaming. Thanks to Proton, you can even play many Windows-only games on Linux. Steam OS has a console-like interface, but you can also switch to desktop mode and use it as a normal PC. So, which Linux distro is right for you? Linux isn't just one operating system. It's an ecosystem. Every distro has its purpose, so the best one depends on your needs. Which one would you pick? Drop your choice in the comments. I'd love to see what you're running. Subscribe and like it. More great content is on the way.